in this session we will try to discuss about superficial muscles of back why only superficial muscles of back because when we are discussing in the upper limb some of the muscles they are connecting vertebral column to the bones of upper limb that's what first two layers of back muscles we are going to discuss in this session if you take first layer muscles trapezius muscle and latissimus tarsi second layer muscles levator scapulae rhomboidus minor rhomboidus major these muscles we are going to discuss in this session first if you take latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi muscle takes origin from spinous process of lower 6 thoracic vertebrae spinous process of all lumbar vertebrae spinous process of all sacral vertebrae and corresponding supraspinous ligaments actually spinous process of all sacral vertebrae will be fused and forms a median sacral crest so median sacral crest then iliac crest lower 4 or 5 ribs and inferior angle of scapula recollect once again spines of lower 6 thoracic vertebrae spines of all lumbar vertebrae spinous process of all sacral vertebrae that means median sacral crest and corresponding supraspinous ligaments then iliac crest then lower 4 to 5 ribs and inferior angle of scapula clear so this is the origin of latissimus dorsi i am marking here lower 6 means what 7 to 12 thoracic vertebrae so here then spines of all lumbar vertebrae means this is also origin then spines of all sacral vertebrae means here actually at the lower part when it is attaching to the spines of sacral vertebrae this muscle becomes aponeurosis and it blends with the posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia right you remember only this one at the lower part it becomes a aponeurosis it will be blends with or it will be fused with posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia then iliac crest so here also it is taking origin after that lower 4 to 5 ribs and inferior angle of scapula these are the origins clear so it is having very wide origin see this is the origin from here fibers will go upwards and laterally is it actually here upper fibers will go horizontally towards lateral aspect then lower fibers will go obliquely upwards and laterally obliquely upwards and laterally and this muscle where it has to attach we know that there is lesser tuberosity greater tuberosity of humerus in between the lesser tuberosity and greater tuberosity of the humerus there will be intertubercular sulcus okay otherwise floor of intertubercular sulcus clear so this muscle will be inserting to the floor of intertubercular sulcus in twisted manner this is the origin and insertion recollect once again it is taking origin from spinous process of lower 6 thoracic vertebrae that means t7 to t12 then all lumbar vertebrae l1 to l5 all sacral vertebrae that means median sacral crest then what is this iliac crest then what are these lower 4 to 5 ribs then inferior angle of scapula these are the origins and what is insertion insertion is very simple floor of intertubercular sulcus actually intertubercular sulcus having the medial lip and lateral lip and intermediate floor if you take the medial lip it gives insertion to the teres major if you take the lateral lip it is giving insertion to the pectoralis major in between these two majors there is insertion of latissimus dorsi that's what there is a mnemonic called lady between two majors so this lady that means latissimus dorsi is inserting in between the two major muscles teres major and pectoralis major clear so insertion is floor of inter tubercular sulcus let me draw this muscle properly this is latissimus dorsi origin and insertion recollect once again spinous process of t7 to t12 l1 to l5 median sacral crest iliac crest lower 4 to 5 ribs and inferior angle of scapula then insertion 
floor of intertubercular sulcus in between the two majors that means in between the teres major and pectoralis major so this is lattice mesh dorsi origin insertion then what is nerve supply it is supplied by thoracodorsal nerve it is branch from the posterior cord of brachial plexus thoracodorsal nerve then what are the actions it is extensor of shoulder joint that means extensor of arm along with medial rotation extension and medial rotation then along with pectoralis major latissimus mesh dorsi is very strong adductor adductor of shoulder joint so extension medial rotation adduction along with that it helps in the elevation of trunk during climbing that's what latissimus mesh dorsi muscle we can also call as climbing muscle so these are the actions recollect once again extension and medial rotation adduction along with pectoralis major then it elevates the trunk during climbing so these are the actions now we will discuss about next muscle trapezius muscle if you wanted to discuss about trapezius muscle here we have to know some bony landmarks here external occipital protuberance and superior nocal line this protuberance what we are calling external occipital protuberance just lateral to that there will be superior nocal line right then from external occipital protuberance to the C7 vertebrae that means 7th cervical vertebrae there will be one elastic ligament will be there that ligament what we are calling ligamentum nuque so from here to here there will be ligamentum nuque then all spines of thoracic vertebrae that means T1 to T12 thoracic vertebrae all these parts are giving origin to the trapezius muscle if you wanted to draw i will tell you one by one first external occipital protuberance then medial one third of superior nocal line that means here then ligamentum nuque ligamentum nuque which is extending from external occipital protuberance to the c7 that means seventh cervical vertebrae then spines of all thoracic vertebrae that means from t1 to t12 spines and corresponding supraspinous ligaments so this is the origin of trapezius muscle recollect once again external occipital protuberance medial one third of superior nocal line ligamentum nuque spines of all thoracic vertebrae this is the origin now we will see insertion upper fibers that means the fibers which are arising from the occipital bone these fibers obliquely runs downwards and forms the posterior boundary for the posterior triangle and they will insert it to the posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle that means this part this is the part this part posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle very simple upper fibers are inserting to the posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle so this area all these upper fibers inserted to the posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle see this is lateral one third and this is medial two third then middle fibers middle fibers can go transversely upper fibers are coming obliquely downwards but the middle fibers can go transversely so they are going transversely and inserting to where inserting to the medial border of acromion process see this is the acromion process acromion process having the medial border and lateral border see this is medial border this is lateral border this is medial border and this is lateral border it is inserting to the medial border of acromion process that means here along with that these fibers will be inserting to the upper lip of crest of spine of scapula actually this is spine of scapula and this is the crest of spine of scapula this crest of spine of scapula having upper lip and lower lip upper lip of crest of spine of scapula so this is insertion of middle fibers then what about lower fibers lower fibers will go obliquely upwards like this lower fibers will go obliquely upwards and laterally and inserting to the deltoid tubercle see here this is the crest of spine of scapula over the crest of spine of scapula we can found one tubercle this tubercle what we are calling deltoid tubercle so lower fibers of trapezius muscle inserting to the deltoid tubercle like this it becomes a tendon this tendon will be inserting to the deltoid tuberosity this is how trapezius muscle will be inserting 
रेकलेक्ट वन सगे आरिजन एक्सटर्नल आक्सपिटल प्रोट्यूबरेंस मीडियल वन थर्ड ऑफ सुपीरियर नोकल लाइन लिगमेंटम नूके आल स्पाइन ऑफ थोरासिक दिस इज द आरिजन इनसर्शन अपर फैबर्स इनसर्टिंग टू द क्लाविकल विच पार्ट ऑफ द क्लाविकल पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर ऑफ लैटरल वन थर्ड ऑफ क्लाविकल दे मिडिल फैबर्स गोस् ट्रांसफर्सली अंड इनसर्टिंग टू द अक्रोमियन प्रोसेस एंड द अपर लिप ऑफ क्रिस्ट ऑफ स्पाइन ऑफ स्कैपला then lower fibers obliquely goes upwards and laterally inserting to the deltoid tubercle actually these fibers will become tendon the tendon will be sliding or gliding over the triangular area of spine of scapula in between this tendon and this triangular area of spine of scapula there will be bursa for lubrication so this is origin and insertion of trapezius muscle then what about nerve supply nerve supply is by 11th cranial nerve spinal accessory nerve but proprioception fibers will be carried through the c3 c4 nerves so this is about nerve supply then what is action see here upper fibers and lower fibers when they contract along with serratus anterior overhead abduction actually lower five digitations of serratus anterior and upper and lower fibers of trapezius muscle will be rotating the scapula imagine this is the scapula this scapula will be rotated so that glenoid cavity will be facing upwards that action will be done during the overhead abduction right so overhead abduction done by superior fibers and inferior fibers of trapezius along with lower five digitations of serratus anterior then what are the other actions one is overhead abduction that means rotation of scapula so that glenoid cavity faces upwards along with serratus anterior then superior fibers that is upper fibers elevates the scapula like this along with levator scapulae that we will see along with levator scapulae upper fibers will elevate the shoulder or elevates the scapula clear then middle fibers middle fibers will retract the scapula because it is attaching to the scapula acromion process so when middle fibers are contracted scapula will be retracted retraction like this retraction of scapula but this action along with rhomboidus major and minor you will see that these are the actions of trapezius very simple overhead abduction along with serratus anterior muscle retraction of scapula along with rhomboidus major and minor elevation of scapula along with levator scapulae these are the actions of trapezius muscle now we will see muscles which are present in the second layer those are levator scapulae rhomboidus major rhomboidus minor first if you take levator scapulae levator scapulae muscle taking origin from posterior tubercles of transverse process of upper four cervical vertebrae see here 1 2 3 4 4 vertebrae vertebrates these cervical vertebrates having the transverse process the transverse process having anterior tubercle and posterior tubercle leave about anterior tubercle we need only posterior tubercle so posterior tubercle of transverse process of c1 c2 c3 c4 from these posterior tubercles see here c1 c2 c3 c4 posterior tubercles of transverse process of c1 to c4 are upper four cervical vertebrae giving origin to the levator scapulae muscle from there fibers comes obliquely downwards like this and they will be inserting to the scapula see here this is scapula scapula having medial border and lateral border this medial border we can also call as vertebral border so it is inserting to the vertebral border but up to where see here this is superior angle of scapula this is spine of scapula and this is inferior angle of scapula from the superior angle of the scapula to the spine of scapula that means from here to here so this is insertion recollect once again levator scapulae muscle taking origin from the posterior tubercles of transverse process of upper four cervical vertebrae insertion to the medial border of scapula from superior angle of scapula to the spine of the scapula from here to here this is levator scapulae muscle then what is nerve supply of it c3 c4 and few fibers from the c5 so this is nerve supply of levator scapulae then what is action name itself implies that levator elevation scapulae scapula levator scapulae elevation of scapula so it elevates the scapula along with what upper fibers of 
trapezius muscle. Along with upper fibers of trapezius muscle, it elevates the scapula. Then another muscle which is taking origin from lower part of ligamentum nuke, spine of 7th cervical vertebrae, spine of 1st thoracic vertebrae. Ligamentum nuke, lower part, spine of 7th cervical vertebrae, spine of 1st thoracic vertebrae. From these parts, rhomboidus minor will be arising. Recollect once again. Lower part of ligamentum nuke, spine of 7th cervical vertebrae, spine of 1st thoracic vertebrae. From here, this muscle is coming. And where it has to insert? It will be inserting to the medial border only, medial border of scapula, where opposite to the spine, that means here. Opposite to the spine means here. This is rhomboidus minor. Rhomboidus minor muscle taking origin from the lower part of ligamentum nuke, spine of 7th cervical vertebrae, spine of 1st thoracic vertebrae. Insertion to the medial border of scapula opposite to the spine of scapula. That means this area. This is about rhomboidus minor. Then we will discuss about rhomboidus major. Rhomboidus major muscle taking origin from pines of 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th thoracic vertebrae. Very simple. Rhomboidus major taking origin from spinous process of T2, T3, T4, T5. From these spines, rhomboidus major taking origin and inserting to the medial border only. From where to where? It is inserting to the medial border of scapula in between spine of scapula and inferior angle of scapula. That means this total area. That to which surface? Dorsal surface. All these muscles are inserting to the dorsal surface of medial border only. So, this is insertion of rhomboidus major. Recollect once again. Levator scapulae taking origin from the posterior tubercles of upper four cervical vertebrae. Insertion to the medial border of scapula from superior angle to the spine. Rhomboidus minor taking origin from lower part of ligamentum nuke, spinous process of C7, spinous process of T1. Insertion to the medial border of scapula only but opposite to the spine. Then rhomboidus major taking origin from spinous process of T2. 2 to T5. That means spinous process of 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th thoracic vertebrae. Insertion is to the medial border of scapula from spine of scapula to the angle of scapula. Right? All these muscles are inserting to which surface? Dorsal surface only. Dorsal surface of medial border of scapula. So, this is about origin insertion of levator scapulae, rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major. Then, what is the action of rhomboidus major and minor? See here, these two muscles when they contract, scapula will be retracted backwards along with what? Along with middle fibers of trapezius. So, retraction of scapula mainly. So, rhomboidus minor and major will retract the scapula along with middle fibers of trapezius. These three muscles you can see only when you remove the trapezius muscle. See here, here trapezius muscle is there no? In the same manner, here also trapezius muscle will be there like this. So, this trapezius muscle and this trapezius muscle will be looking like diamond shape or trapezoid in shape. That is what they given the name as trapezius. As soon as you cut trapezius muscle and you reflect it laterally, then only you can see these muscles. So, these are the second layer muscles. These are the first layer muscles. Actually, trapezius muscle will be overlapping the upper part of lattice and dorsal muscle also. So, this is about muscles of back. Here we have to discuss about two triangles. Here one triangle you can see, here one more triangle you can see. What are those triangles and how they have formed and what is the clinical importance of those triangles we will see now. Actually in relation with the latissimus dorsi muscle there will be two triangles. What are those? Here lumbar triangle of petit. This is the external oblique muscle. This is external oblique muscle. And what is this muscle? Lateral border of latissimus dorsi. And what is this iliac crest? Here you can observe one triangular area. This triangular area what we are calling lumbar triangle of petit. What is it? Lumbar triangle. Lumbar triangle of petit. Lumbar triangle of petit. Now we will see what are the boundaries of this triangle. If you see medially what is this muscle? 
latissimus dorsi which border lateral border of latissimus dorsi then if you see laterally what is this muscle external obliquus muscle laterally external obliquus otherwise posterior border of external obliquus muscle then inferiorly what is this iliac crest and floor is formed by internal obliquus muscle recollect once again lumbar triangle of petit boundaries are medially lateral border of latissimus dorsi laterally posterior border of external obliquus muscle inferiorly iliac crest floor is formed by internal obliquus muscle then what is the clinical importance of it here this is potentially weakest area through this triangle herniations may happen this is the clinical importance of lumbar triangle of petit then here one more triangle you can see this is the triangle this triangle bounded medially by lateral border of trapezius see this is trapezius then laterally by medial border of what is this bone scapula or vertebral border of scapula then inferiorly by what upper border of latissimus dorsi so this triangle what we are calling triangle of auscultation what is it triangle of auscultation auscultation triangle of auscultation what is the clinical importance of it here also there will be triangle of auscultation here also there will be triangle of auscultation if you see the boundaries of it medially by trapezius laterally by medial border of scapula inferiorly by upper border of latissimus dorsi then floor is formed by 6 and 7th ribs 6 and 7th ribs and intercostal space present in between the 6th and 7th rib recollect once again triangle of auscultation medially by trapezius otherwise lateral border of trapezius laterally by medial border of scapula or vertebral border of scapula inferiorly by superior border of latissimus dorsi floor is formed by 6th and 7th ribs and intercostal space present in between the 6th and 7th ribs then what is the clinical importance of it deep to this area in case of left side there will be cardiac end of stomach because of that if you auscultate here that means if you examine with stethoscope you can hear splash of fluid that means you can hear fluid falling sound in case of esophageal obstruction in case of esophageal obstruction if you keep the stethoscope over the triangle of auscultation and if you hear you can hear the splash of fluid then one more importance is deep to this triangle of auscultation we can found the apex of lower lobe of lung so here lung sounds can be clearly audible right so these are the clinical importance of triangle of auscultation this is about superficial muscles of back and triangle of auscultation and triangle of petit or lumbar triangle of petit that's it for today